Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's going to be a trying to fix video. A video where we try and fix this Sony Walkman. So this looks like a relatively modern one for a Walkman and the model number is WMEX194 so I'll put up on screen when I believe it was made. And this was sent to me by Mike from 1UP Gaming, he's got a store over on Amazon and he sent me a nice little box full of different things that are faulty. So with this one here, when we put the batteries in, it doesn't do anything. So it looks lovely and clean here. The whole thing looks pretty much immaculate, but yet when we put batteries into it, and we press play, you can hear it turning. You can hear the motor turning, but look, nothing's turning here and here. Also, rewind, nothing happening and uh, fast forward, or rewind and fast forward, whatever. Yeah, and you can see the light is on there. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that it might just be a belt issue. So, it might well be a short video for a change. Now, if it is a belt issue, yes, it's not gonna be the most interesting of videos, but I think it's quite good, and let me tell you why. A, because I don't have to spend 10 hours on it, <laughs> which is always a bonus, but it's more like real life. So a lot of time in these videos, when you see me do stuff, you probably think, oh, I don't even know if I want to bother doing that because Vince has spent all day fixing it. It's a complete nightmare. This is broken, that's broken. That's because it's very rare to get an easy fix off eBay because if it was an easy fix, the owner's probably already done it. So in this instance here, if it is just a belt change, that is a complete real fix that would happen to so many people out there. Would it go onto eBay? Less likely because somebody had probably already looked up how to do it themselves and then already done it to get it working again and then sell it as a working one. So this one here will hopefully be more realistic, more doable, and then it will give a lot of people more confidence to give things a go themselves when they see that things can be done easily. Now, I don't know if that is the problem with here, but I'm thinking because of the age of it, it probably is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it apart. Right, so looking round, I can see two little screw holes here, which is good, because it means there's less clips, and then inside I can actually see three bits here that look like I have to get a little tool in there just to unclip them to remove the back. So let's start with this to begin with. Now I've just noticed it is missing the little belt clip, but I, I presume you can probably buy them separately if you wanted. And this one also has a mega base button for off and on. Right, okay, still not gonna come off with my fingers. So I'm just gonna get a little pry tool to open it up. Right, plastic would be better, but I'm just gonna use this because I think it's probably gonna open up quite easily. There you go. Right, so that's that one there. Now I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna try just to push in these bits here and hopefully that will kind of release the back. Yeah, they're all released, so now I just need to pop them off from here. There we go. Oh, okay, well I can see the belt. The belt is still in place. So let's pop some batteries in and actually see what's happening. Maybe it's not going to be the belt. Unless it's loose. Oh, there we go. It's just kicked in. It's just kicked in working now. But to begin with, the belt just spun. Yeah, look, it's working now. Let's open it up. Yeah, you can see it's spinning now. It's actually spinning with quite a bit of force. So I wonder now, was something fouling against it to stop that from? Was something fouling against that? So what happened was, I just pressed play, it did nothing, it just spun, and then all of a sudden it just gripped and started to work. Hmm, I'll tell you what, let's inspect the belt. Let's take this little bit off here. So we've got a screw here and uh, a little clip up here. Hmm. 
Right, I'm not going to be able to take it off any more than that because we've got a ribbon cable here and then we've got the the motor contacts here. Ah, look, 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 look. <laughs> hey, excellent, right. Do you know what? I'm pleased now. I know why it's not working. Look what we've got here. Can you see the belt? And can you see it's going around the clip here? So why did it not work before? Because the cover was against the clip here, and then when you were pressing play, all that was happening was the motor was going around, but the belt couldn't go around because look, it's around this clip here. Can you see here? So what's happened is, this was taken apart probably to replace the belt, and then accidentally it was put around that bit there, then it was closed up, because if you look at that belt, it does look quite new, doesn't it? So, if that had just been hooked around the other side of the clip, then it would have been fine. So I was wondering, why did it start working as soon as I took the back off? And the reason is, is because I took the back off, and then I pressed play, it spun for a couple of seconds, then started to get traction because there was no more, it's causing resistance here against it, but not as much as having the plastic properly wedged onto it. So let's get some little tweezers, unclip that, and then that should be okay. So let's just zoom in on that bit. Very simple fix, but you know what? The reason I quite like it is because it's nice to fully prove what the fault was. So I th honestly believe that that belt has been changed because it just looks so black and so clean. In fact, let's just unhook it a minute just to make sure that it is there. Uh, make sure it's not stretched at all. I suppose, do you know what I could do now that I've got it off, just in case it was damaged where it's been clamped down on? I mean, it doesn't look it. Let me just see if I've got one that matches that size. And if I have, I might change it just for the, the sake of changing it. Okay, I've got another one. They're slightly thicker, but it looks to be a, the same uh, circumference. So let's try, let's try and put it on. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that one. It's just, uh, just in case. Let's just see if that's going to sort itself out now. I'm just going to pop a tape on and I'm just going to listen just with headphones just for a moment just to see if it sounds right and if it does I can close it up. If not, I'm going to pop this one back on. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not sure if that sounds a little bit high pitched or not. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to try the other belt. Yeah, okay, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a difference. So basically, with this one here, it sounds like a male voice sounds female, and the female voice sounds like a very high-pitched child, but yet when I put this belt in, the male voice is a male voice, and the female voice sounds like a female voice. So all I need to do now is put this little bit back together. I'm not going to put any grease on here, because it all just looks spotlessly clean, but what I will do is I will clean the tape head on the inside. Also, because it's kind of hard to get to, I don't want the grease to end up going on the belt. So we can actually close this one up now. Now, if for example, we did only have the option of putting the other belt in there, let's say if we couldn't get the correct replacement, then I believe that this one here would be the thing that you can turn to speed up and slow down the motor. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but it is very close to the motor, so I'd say that is what you're going to probably turn. Sometimes it can be actually a hole on the on here that allows you to do it, so you don't have to take it apart. And in fact, yeah, look, see these holes here? So let's just see now, that's going to correspond to something near the O and the R of the corporation. And if you have a look here, can you see that's where this is here? So yes, there's foil over it, but if you had to, you could make the hole through here, you could feel, make a hole, you could get a screwdriver, oh sorry, or even just peel it back, couldn't you? Peel it back, 
get a screwdriver in there, adjust it without even taking the cover off. So um, if, for example, it doesn't sound like it's playing correctly, maybe the belt's stretched a little bit over the years, then you might be able to get away with just doing that short term until the belt goes completely. Right, so that is it, back together there. What a simple mistake to do. And also, even when I put the belt on there, it got caught on there, and this side of the wheel on the inside, so you just have to hook it over both sides. So I'm just going to click that back into place, like so, and pop these screws back in. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to clean up the tape head in here, and also these little this little pinch roller as well, make sure they're nice and clean. So I'm just going to get a bit of IPA and a cotton bud, a Q-tip, and just give it a very light rub. So I've pressed play just to stick it out a bit more, and I'm just rubbing on top of it. So I can see from the tape head here that this isn't an auto-reverse one because it is just, uh, it's just got the one lot of the contacts inside, so the auto reverse has like top and bottom. So it's got to play both ways. In fact, look at that, you can see the dirt has come off that, look at that. Well, I'm well happy that I've cleaned that, look at that. Well, I'm just going to do the pinch roller. Which is this little roller here. And just give the rest a little clean up, get rid of some of the dust. Well, just with the headphones in, I'm just going to make sure that this AVLS is working, just to see if it makes it any bit louder at all. Yeah, that works, and just check the volume. Yeah, perfect. Right, let's get the speaker and just to show you it playing. Right, okay, so I've got my speaker set up now. Pop it in. Press play. Yeah, you can tell the difference there. Volume. And make a boost. Yes, I do. I know you were worried that we... It was met at the gates of the city by the patriarchs and the clergy. Okay, so that's all working. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Right, okay, it didn't rewind there. Hold on. No, not rewinding. And it's not fast forwarding. Right, let's see now. Is it actually doing it here? It's doing it here. Oh, but look, it doesn't like any resistance. Yeah, look. Right, so we have a problem with it rewinding. So, do you know what I'm thinking? Let's turn this off. I'm thinking that the belt is too loose. So I'm going to have to take it apart again. I'm going to put in the tighter belt and then maybe play around with the screw to get the volume to sound, uh, to sound right. Because I think what's happening is... There, look, look, it doesn't take much to stop that at all. And then it just thinks it's at the end of the tape, because it just stops there. Likewise with this one. Yeah. So at least we know that that stop function's working. All right, let's try it with the other belt, just in case there's nothing to do with that. So I'm just going to pop, pop it apart, just like I did before. Come on, it wouldn't be a My Mate Vince video if it was just really, 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 really straightforward. <laughs> Right, let's see if it fast forwards now. Once it plays. No.
Weird, why is it not rewinding and fast forwarding? So it's not the belt. Wow, uh, okay. I'm already a little bit stumped. Could it, does everything need greasing up? Could that be it? I'm sure it was going to be a belt. It does look a little bit greasy in here. I'm wondering maybe if it was possibly cleaned in the past with... Uh, WD-40 or something rather than rather than plastic grease. I wonder whether somehow that's putting some kind of I don't know maybe it's Maybe I should just try greasing it up see if that makes any difference. I mean, I can't see Anything obvious right now It doesn't everything looks in really good condition Let's try putting some grease on this is the stuff I'm going to be using so it's really expensive, it comes in a massive container for whatever it is, 70 or 80 pounds. But if you look on eBay, then I got this particular one. So a seller is just, you know, putting them into small little tubs and then selling them off for however much it was. I can't remember, like five pound or something. But a little tub will last you ages. I got two tubs. In fact, this is the this is a new tub that I haven't touched yet. Let me get the other tub that I've been using. Right, this one here. So I've had this for probably about a year now, and there's still Still loads left in the one tub. I'm just going to apply a little bit to the different gears around. And I'm going to put some in the mechanism as well. Well, I haven't really worked it in yet and I might put more grease in there. Let's just see if it's made any difference. What is going on? So it works okay when there's no tape, but the tape is causing the tape's causing extra resistance, which is then stopping it from working. Right, just give me a little while. I'm going to try to work out what's happening because without it now, you can see it works perfectly. It's just as soon as we put, for example, a load in there, you know, a bit of resistance, then it stops. I just need to work out why. But to make it easy for myself, I'm just going to try to take this uh, mechanism out. So now I can kind of get to both sides of it. This is interesting. I've just taken this thing out here, which I believe is to do with the auto reverse. Because, for example, when you press play or fast forward, let's do the fast forward one. There's a little sort of metal tab in here. This one here. That when you push it over... So when it feels resistance along this thing here, it kicks that lever over and can you see it turns it off and it's the same as play. So when it gets to the end of the tape, then obviously it can't go anymore. So it does that to stop it. Now, uh, so this is the thing that you've seen kind of like moving along earlier and this moves up and down here and when it feels it, it feels resistance, it kicks across there. So I've taken it out just to see if it makes a difference and interestingly, it looks like it does because now watch this. Right, so just put the batteries in there, just balance them in. If I press play, you can see that already the, we never had a problem with the play. It feels nice and strong. But now watch this. Look at that. That's fast forward or rewind, I'm not sure. Okay, it's gone weak now. That's only because I, I knocked it out. So let's do play again. Okay, there. Now, look how strong that is. And rewind. Yeah. So it's definitely something to do with that. So let's put the tape in and see if it can actually do it now. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. So we just now need to find out why. 
Hold on. Why is it not playing? I think I'm going to have to get my bench power supply up so I can get a decent power supply on there rather than using the batteries. Right, I'm not 100% sure why the play is not working. Maybe you have to have this thing on and able to make it play. But definitely the fast forward and rewind is working now. So it's something to do with this thing here. So we can now start examining this a little bit closer and see if we can work out what's happening. It's only been a few seconds later. The play is working. I obviously just didn't have something lined in properly. There you go. You can see it's working now. I think maybe the pinch roller wasn't on properly. Okay, so what I'm going to be working on now is why. Why is this causing the fast forward and rewind to constantly turn off? So obviously when the tape gets to the end, it can't turn anymore, which causes this to stop moving. And then this recognises it, this thing here recognises it, and cuts it off. So the very fact that this is doing it, even though the tape should still be moving, says to me that there's too much friction on this so that's what I need to find out why is there too much friction on this what's causing it because I mean it looks to be moving very easy but there shouldn't be that much friction on it because otherwise uh, it's recognizing friction when there shouldn't be friction and it's obviously not coming from the tape because when we play it without this movement in the fast forward and rewind works fine so uh, that's my thinking behind anyway it might be completely wrong but that's what I need to try to work out what's uh, you know what's happening with it it's really confusing me. So I've got my bench power supply on here now. You can see the red and black leads. So I've got three volts going into it. Now, I understand how it should work, all right? So now, watch this. If I press play, it's not play, sorry. If I press uh, fast forward or rewind, whichever one it is, this thing here should be over. So if I hold it there, look, right there. Now, if I hold it over this side, it's fine. And there's a fair bit of power there. I'm putting my fingers against it, and there's a fair bit of power. Yeah, stopping every now and then. But look, as soon as I let go of this, it will work its way to the middle. Ready, watch this, bit of uh, resistance. There, and now. So, what's confusing me is, what's... I think there should be some sort of spring between here and here. Now, there is a spring underneath it. But that basically is just to do with this mechanism, this mechanism thing here, you know, to bring this forward and back. So every time you press play here, when you press stop, it kind of knocks it back into place again. Uh, so I kind of know roughly, I think, how it should work. It's just not doing what I want it to do, because as soon as I put resistance there, it just works its way to the middle and kicks off. Unless I'm completely barking up the wrong tree, because if you keep it there, it knocks off straight away. So I'm thinking it needs to be kept this side. And the same if I was to go like in reverse, watch this. As soon as you put a bit of resistance here, it just kicks off. But if I hold this over here, and now I'm putting loads of resistance on it there, and it's not turning off. See, look. So I don't know why it's, to me, it's like it needs to overcome the spring. Do you know what I mean? If there was a spring here, then when the tape comes to the end, there'd be so much kind of pressure on it because it's come to the end that then it would overcome the spring and go back. But right now, this is just really freewheeling, like really easy going left and right. And at this moment in time, I think that maybe that's the problem. But I can't see anything obvious around here. So I'm going to keep on looking. OK, I think I know what the problem is, so let me zoom in. So I was thinking it was something to do with this arm, but it's not. What it is, is we've got a big gear here and a small gear here. So if I play it, you can see that they're both spinning around, the big and the small gear. That's good. They should both spin when we do fast forward and reverse. But what happens is it starts missing. So it's really hard to see because you only get about one revolution before the auto stop kicks in. But watch this. I'm going to fast forward. You can see it's working fine. Oh, hold on. There. Can you see it's spinning without it? So both now they're both working fine they're both spinning but watch this when i hold it there did you see that spun without this one let's do it let's do it again there it's doing it now right, both spinning hold it there spinning and then it will kick in the auto stop so this is not quite the aligned properly that with that one either through wear or maybe i don't know maybe i just need to push them back into place and it's the same with this one here 
So they're both spinning now. There you go. Did you see that? It stopped. Both spinning. Put a bit of resistance on, and that keeps on spinning. And then the auto start, uh, thing will kick in. So what I need to do is try to find out why. I think I just need to push this one down more, or possibly lift this one up. So let's uh, let's see if I can push this one down any bit more. And this is bent out of place. Because what's happening is, if you have a look here, can you see this gear here ends up slipping underneath it like that. So that lifts up there, and now can you see that this is just spinning underneath it? Yeah? So this spring is to keep it pushed down, isn't it? So every now and then it has to overcome that, and it has to go... Does it go up or down? I think I just need to push this one down more. Maybe this isn't spinning very nicely. Let's try to just do it like that. Let's see if that's going to be enough to do it. No, still skipping. Still skipping. I wonder does this one need to move up more then? press play here this little lever pressing play this little lever moves and look it drops so why is it playing when it drops is something else kicking in to play it oh it goes on the bottom one ah hold on now I'm getting somewhere right okay look when I press play, underneath this gear here, this big gear, there's another gear. And when I press play, this drops. So this is play here. This gear drops and it actually corresponds with the other gear down here. So you can still see that when I move that, they're all spinning. And then when we press fast forward, it jumps up to this gear here. And that's why we've got the problem. So I think this tiny little thing here that lifts up and down, this is what's actually keeping it up. So look, it wants to drop because of this spring. So when you press play, it automatically drops down. But this isn't pushed up enough. This needs to be up to here. So I need to just ever so slightly bend this thing more up. I think that might be it. I think, maybe. So I don't know whether that's gone down through where or not. Let's bend it a little bit. Let's see if that's going to... That might be enough. It might be too much. Let's give it another go now. Right so, right, so we're still playing. Yeah, that's fine. Now, let's stop. No, that's the, that's the actual rubber belt that's slipping there. Okay, that's better. Let's do it this way. Yeah, okay, it's still not strong, but the thing is, it's the belt that's slipping rather than these now. Let's put a tape in. Might have been as simple as that. Right, let's see if it'll do it. Well, it is, isn't it? Not perfect, but that might be because it's just wobbling around the place. Let's try this way. Yes. Wasn't doing that before, was it? And play. Do you know what? I think that's it. Excellent. So, obviously I'll put it back together and make sure. So what it was is, I didn't realise, I just thought that this gear was against this one here. But when you press play... It drops down to that one underneath. Can you just see it? Just in here. In there. And of course then, when you take it off that, so the spring at the moment is forcing it down, and then when you take it off play, this little catch here will move back, which will push the gear up. You see there? 
See, that then pushes the gear up, and it wasn't pushing up enough against this here, so it was slipping. Right, let's uh, put it back together. I mean, I hope it is that. That makes sense to me. Let's put it back in. Let's see how it performs. Also, you can see the rust there on this now. Let me get a macro on that. There, look how corroded it is. There. And that's the reason when I put the Q-tip on it, it was uh, it was dirty. I'm going to give that another clean. I don't know now if that's rust or whether it's scraped. If, for example, the brass may be underneath it. I'm not sure what they're made out of. I'll give it another clean. Now it's cleaning up, isn't it? much easier to do it like this when it's out of the actual uh, body of the Walkman. Yeah, look. Look at that. Wow, definitely rust. There we go, look how much better that looks now. Okay, so let's put this thing back together. And we can test it all over again. nicely into the plastic. So even though you can tell this is one of the cheaper Sony products, because it's a Sony, to me it still seems like it's really well made. I'm just pre pressing play, I just want to clean up the uh, the rubber band a bit just in case there's any grease on it because it was seemed to be giving a little bit, sliding a bit. Yeah, look at that. Right, well, I can already see that it's fast forward and rewinding. Let's pop the tape in. There we go. What a result. Brilliant. I'm just going to check that the auto uh, stop still works. Right, let's see if it works. No, that's spinning and it's not doing it. No, okay, because the belt's slipping here. So it looks like I'm going to have to go with the uh, slightly thicker belt. There we go. Right, watch this. There you go, because the belt's not slipping anymore, you see. So uh, let's rewind that, play it. It's a great mechanism, isn't it? There you go, perfect. Do it a few more times, just to make sure. There we go. And you can see now it seems to be working quite consistently. Good thing is I'm happy that I seen the fault. You know, it wasn't just a case of putting a bit of grease in and suddenly it's working. It was nice to actually properly fault find the fault. So uh, this can actually, this can, uh, yeah, this can all go back together now, can't it? Oh no, I have to, I have to check the what it sounds like with this belt because maybe if it sounds wrong, I'm going to have to then adjust that little screw. Some still looks good in a pair of cords. And if I'm not listening. No, see that that didn't sound right. Oh 
Well, we agonised over going organic. We agonised over everything. Yeah, but when we first started... No, that's supposed to be a man's voice. So let's start turning this one here and seeing, uh, seeing if it will make a difference. Didn't take you long to get your blinkers off, did it? Take the blinkers off? There we go. Is that what I did? Thought I was giving in to the little woman. Holy Archer! So I just turned this one here. Come on. Remember how we agonized over going organic? We agonized over everything. Yeah, but when we first started, it wasn't really me, you know. Didn't take you long to get your blinkers off, did it? Take my blinkers off? Is that what I did? Thought I was giving in to the little woman. Right, that sounds good. There we go, that sounds pretty good. So now, there is actually a way, if, uh, if you're interested, it was in one of my other Walkman videos, that you can get the right frequency on your phone. So you can have your phone listen to it, and then it will listen, so you, basically you play a certain frequency, and then you get your phone to listen to it, and then you can tune this up until you get to that frequency. But when I did it by ear, to me, it seemed close enough. Soon after the fall of Jerusalem, the Egyptians, who had earlier been in occupation of the city, yeah, that sounds absolutely perfect. To Palestine with the intention of ejecting the Crusaders from See, I've listened to this that many times doing these videos that now I am actually confident that that is the correct. Uh, that sounds correct to me. Right, so, okay, I'm going to put it back together. So what did we have to do here? We had to, first of all, release the belt. That's the reason why nothing was working at all. As soon as I took the cover off, it started to work because the belt was crushed here. As it turns out, I've had to replace the belt anyway because it wasn't really given enough grip properly to do the uh, auto reverse. Maybe it would have done if I hadn't sort of covered it in grease and stuff like that. Not too sure. You could always pop it in a pan of boiling water and that might reduce the size a little bit. Uh, and the main thing was that it wasn't fast forward and rewinding purely because there was just a little bit of wear on that metal thing there. It was only probably a fraction of a millimetre, but that's all that was needed. So just by bending that back up into place, for example, when you press play, that little bit there, it has now shoved this against this bigger gear here so they're not missing anymore because before, as soon as a bit of friction happened, it was easier for it just to jump away. In other words, it was easier just instead of... Uh, going with the friction it was easier to just push down against that spring and that's what was causing it uh, not to work but now because I've bent the metal up it's bending this gear right against this one here so that's good what I am going to do is just before I put it back together I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this bit here because it's going to be uh, remember I don't know really how much to bend it I've just bent it to make it work but maybe it needs to be a kind of like a a tiny tiny little bit down so by putting a little bit of grease on it here if I have done it a little bit high there's going to be less wear between the gears there we go right, let's pop the lid back on it Okay, so there we have it. Wasn't the 10 minute job that I thought it was gonna be, but I think it's turned out to be more interesting because now I got to know the mechanism more and properly did a fault find on it and solved the issue. So now if I press play. Horses that were left, the Crusaders intercepted them and turned them back. Under Godfrey of Bouillon, was a That's that one there. Of the time, remember the times he pulls us out of a tight spot. Precisely. There we go, and that's that one. And you can now see that the rewind and fast forward is working. How's Sophie? That's a dodgy bit of the tape. And there we go, that's fast forwarding as well, or rewinding. yourself from personality fantastic what a nice fix i really really enjoyed doing that one so a big thumbs up to mike from one up gaming thanks a lot for sending this over to me 
It's uh, I've already done quite a few Walkmans, but I still find it enjoyable, especially when there's been a few months in between the fixes. You don't mind then doing them again. It's quite nice seeing the inside of them. And this was a different fault than I had before. Before the other ones I've done, I've never seen that I haven't had that fault before. So now if I come across it again in the future, or if you guys come across it, now you know that that little wheel that does the fast forwarding and rewinding jumps up to a different cog than when it does the playing. And actually, thinking about it now, of course it's going to, because it's got to be a different speed. So maybe the motor spins at a constant revolution the whole time. For example, I'm making this up, let's say if it's like 100 revolutions per minute, then it needs to play slower than it does when it's fast forward and recording. Hence the reason you have two different size gears. So it must be the bigger one, no, it's the smaller one to play, and then to the smaller one underneath to play, and then the bigger one on top to fast forward and rewind. That makes sense, doesn't it? Well, there you go. So happy with that. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care. Bye now.